I'm honored to invite the chairperson, Senate Search Committee, Professor J. White Mogisha, to address us. You're welcome. Mr. Chancellor and your team, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, once again, once more, they'd like to have you for the second day for the presentations of the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Finance Administration Countries. First, we want to thank you for breaking the whole day yesterday and for keeping us busy and for entertaining our candidates yesterday. It was a great day. I hope you learned a lot of things from the presentations. Today, we are privileged to have two candidates and we want you to give them uh, uh, support and then we see how the day was. Uh, yesterday, I introduced the members. I know today is another function. I introduced to you the members of the search committee and proudly to reiterate that I have Professor Juanga from Department of Physics and Professor Antevia uh, Grace from Hendo from Department of School of Gender, uh, 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 Professor Frank Mine from uh, School of Gender Medicine. I hope that is the name. And Professor Gilbert Maiga from uh, Computer Science. You are all welcome once again and we wish you the best in this exercise. We are supported by the Academic Registrar, who is here with us. We thank you for the good job you did yesterday and your team. Council members present, we want to take team interest in the exercise and send us because everybody is counting on you as we conclude this exercise. I wish you all the best in today's event. Thank you very much. Uh, probably I should have mentioned that with us, once more, we have our great team come together here, the great team of moderators, and uh, you know how they did very good work yesterday. I want to introduce them to you, uh, Dr. John Saimba from the Department of Mathematics, Dr. Florence Laika from the Department of Linguistics, and English Language Statistics. If that can work. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to this exercise of listening and uh, to presentations by candidates who wish to take offices in the uh, offices of the Deputy Vice Chancellors for Academic Affairs and Finance and Administration. Today we are going to listen to the candidates who are who wish to take this university on uh, in the office of the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Finance and Administration. Let's start it off with uh, Professor William Baseo. Uh, Professor William Baseo is a Ugandan, a professor of occupational medicine. He was born in Uganda in 1957. He's married with three children. He graduated with an MBCHP in 1985 from McKinley University. Thereafter, he obtained a Master of Medicine in Occupational Medicine from the National University of Singapore in 1992. And he went on to obtain a PhD in Public Health from the Atlanta International University in the US in 2014. He has been a head of department, he has been a deputy dean, and he served as dean uh, for eight years of the School of Public Health. He's currently the acting deputy vice chancellor of finance and administration, and he has served in this position for the last one year. He joined the Magdalene University way back in 1993 as a lecturer, and has since risen through the ranks, the academic ranks, his current level of professor. He has attended several professional development courses, including authentic leadership development at Harvard Business School in August 2015. He has attended strategic planning and management courses at the Boston University, health insurance and financing at the University of the Philistines, uh, and several others. He's, uh, been a principal investigator for several projects that have been funded by development partners including USAID, 
where we are looking at our environment, campus environment, and what we have. Trees, plantations, and so on. Now, before I say the challenges or what affects my career, I want to say, and I want you to reflect as I present, what am I bringing that is relevant to those issues? One, the management table, I want to bring professional, I'm a professional manager with tested leadership skills. I have the ability to mobilize institutional resources, and I'm a mobilizer. A negotiator who negotiates until I get a yes. If I get a yes, I go to school and you will see where I got a yes. Seven years of university leadership and regional and international network leadership experience. Research grant making, as moderator said, small and big. My smallest grant was six thousand dollars for the whole year. My biggest grant now is thirty. At the $4 million a year. So small and big, I am there. Human resource capacity problem. I left the school from becoming, from institute, becoming a school, those of you who were senators, and I broke the capacity of the school. At the time I left, we had nearly three quarters of our staff with PhDs and promoted beyond senior research. I have experience with university systems. Now, what are the strengths that I see in Makere that we can build on as we make Makere better? One, we have nine vibrant colleges and one independent school. When I was checking, many universities that have colleges actually started with two colleges. For us, we have nine, which we can actually grow and they become like nine universities. We have a vast number of students. We have the largest number of students in the region. In the region. Therefore, we should take advantage of that. We have the human capacity source of... We, we produce human capacity for other universities. So, so if we can produce for others, why not for ourselves? We have a good brand name. In the station commit phone that our name, Makere University, is more known than Uganda when they were doing their benchmark. So that means we can actually champion ourselves. We account for 70 to 85% of the research that affects this country. And therefore we can ride on that and get more resources to do more research for this country. We are credible both locally and internationally. That was in the station report. The other strengths, uh, we have a strong HR capacity. We have the largest number of PhDs in the region, in, in Makere, and professors. We look, I was looking at Chambo, our, our brothers. They, they have less than five professors. And we are staying, we are competing with them. We are not. We actually we need to nurture them. We have to provide staff. When we look at our support staff, many of our support staff actually have masters. That's why at times we need to go back to the establishment where people are required to have one degree. Now when they have masters, we say they are qualified. I think we need to change some of that so that we, we reign with, with, the, with the century. <laughs> we have this process. I have checked. Makere University has the largest amount of land as a public institution in this country. And we must take advantage of that. The infrastructure, the indoor stadium that we have now nobody has it, and then the facilities. We have estates. Estates should be developed to actually leave this, this town, this city. We have good well both domestic, I have talked about that. We have a wide network of well placed alumni. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go to any, any country, you will find a McKinley graduate. Why don't you take advantage of those graduates build this? The financial challenges. Now, any of us have so many challenges, and I have grouped them. One is financial. We have limited diversification of resources. Our revenue base is still small. We still depend on government and the tuition. We have student tuition, which is not even unit cost. But 
we cannot do unit cost in the economy of Uganda. So we must find ways to have students sustain them, they study, they don't drop out, but we also still make money. College budgets are unable to meet the end of the best corporations. You are giving your professors, these budgets cannot meet what you need. We need to do something. Failure to implement the strategy and work plan is because the resources are not adequate. We have increased increasing university debt budget and an conducive teaching, learning, and research. No matter what they are. All these are challenges, but they are challenges that rotate around finance. The human resource challenges include underfunded and understaffed. We, are, we say we are understaffed. That's true. And therefore, people end up doing a lot of work, which is not remunerated. So we must find ways of raising resources and remunerate that work. Not ask for small money and we say that this is an allowance. The allowance is not sufficient. Lack of appraisal and performance in the system. This university, we need to appraise people and reward them as a way of motivation. It is done in many other universities, it has not been done. <laughs> we have an unmotivated staff, including myself. The salaries we are paid are low. We need additional resources, Mr. Vice Chancellor. We need to look for resources to make us demotivated. For example, you have so many students, 300 students, and you have no time to go and look for money elsewhere. So why do you get common good or incentive? So we must find resources to address what was incentive or common good. By the way, this is not new, and it's not a demand for material. Only. Many universities do this, and how they do it, I'll come to aid you. Because of restricted recruitment policies of government, Makere has challenges in talent identification. Even if you have a great student, first class, you cannot retain him because you can't improve him. There is a ceiling. Recruitment is against a budget that you cannot expand. Then we have limited or lack of medical or health services for staff. When we talk of health insurance, does Makere University have health insurance? My answer is no. Makere University has a health provider. We need to have a health insurance for ourselves and our 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 dependents. When we come to administration, there is limited interaction, engagement, and consultative approaches. When where do we meet, where does management meet all of us? We need to create opportunities for us to meet, discuss, and see what hurts us. Inadequate support systems for staff. People are employed. You go to states, they are there, they are many. But they do not know what they are supposed to do because they have not been skilled to that. People are given jobs. We have business, we have aims. Now, people are saying we can't register. The registrars are saying we can't register because there is no plan to redo and make people move forward. The last one on administrative, which is more touching to many of us, is security for students, staff, and property, including land. We all know that students have bags are grabbed, they are raped. But I will tell you what we have done and what we continue to do. The other challenges, I prefer to put other challenges as other, although they are not other. They are also very important. Students. The students, on the student side, we have the poor learning, living, and social environment. Poor facilities, why city? Imagine a university student, post-graduate, that has not had internet around his room, his class. The only internet that is in the classes and, and in the compound that I know in Makere is in the School of Public Health. But we can preserve that and expand it to cover the whole of the university. The environment, generally, and the policy for teaching, office space is small. I have visited some and the people share for laboratory and so on. Colleges are not yet in real sense colleges. We need to decentralize so that colleges are empowered to perform 
the schools and the departments need to perform their duties to be independent. The situation rule out such that you know, we can make proposals, but we do not have that negotiation to do what? To, to, to get the right course. Now, proposed solutions. We need to put the university on the path of financial sustainability. Build long-term financial sustainability. Empower the estates, the legal, and invest in our land. Legal, we should be the ones doing this legal work. And that way, and get paid. We have the greatest minds here. When you go to town, there was someone, somebody said, I was taught by Professor Kabungo. I said, ah, I am I said, yeah, that one. So, these are the farm, these are the people that we need to exploit. And the holding company, the university farms, why should Kaunyu be there? You don't make money from there. Kaunyu should feed, feed this city. Feed this city. Okay. The financial, they have proposed financial one to get strong linkages with the public and the private, so that our incomes and the other people find the such. And then we want to negotiate with the government to give us loans. Because market is not going anywhere. If they gave us a loan and we build, we will suddenly pay. Because we make money from them. Administrative. They, we want to strengthen the qualities. As I said earlier, qualities must be strengthened. And when you look down on the loans, security. Council and management realized that the situation was a big problem. So, through our research and survey, we found the dark hiding zones. So, and they included plantations. So, it was decided to cut them and clean up and make the place. And we have done that. Ladies and gentlemen, since we did that, how many cases of rape or bugs being snatched have we had in our care? Zero. Human resource, we want to improve the, the, the human resource capacity, we want to build the, the appraisal system. But what's one, one important thing I want to say, and if you go out from here, go with this. Makeri University does not have a salary scale. What we have as a salary scale from government is actually a guideline of what government can afford. So we need to establish a salary scale for Makeri like other prominent universities, and we are able to look for resources and talk up to Professor, professor Gating of 15 million is peanut. Other suggestions want to organize resources for supporting the unable students. Imagine the best university in this region, we have no single scholarship for our students. We need to raise resources and find the unable but bright students and they come into Makeri. And we need to create student employment. Our students are not employed, that's why they are, they are around them. But if we engage them, give them what to do in their leisure time, and we pay them. But we can only pay them if we have resources. We need to streamline admissions. We say admissions, people are taking them. Where are they taking? They are taking because we are being late. So we need to be strategic and we need and do a rolling admission. When someone doesn't come to your place. Now, this slide I would like to start. You need to stop on this. The challenges that the university faces are common. All of us know them. The possible solutions are or may be well fed low. In any case, there is a strategic plan, a work plan, and everything. But the most important is what is in red. One of the most important issues there is identifying a candidate with the pedigree, the social mobilization skills, and determination to turn these ideas and opportunities into reality. This is what I think we need at this point. And I propose to establish, once I get this job, to establish a desk that will monitor this. Also, sources of funding, all of these are known, and I will not go through all of them one by one. But the last one, we need to establish a donor's forum. Where you have people that commit themselves, I will fund material with them, 
one million dollars every year, no matter what comes. We have the people who are winning their business here. Some of them are alumni. Some of them here from Makeda and they say, I want to support myself with Makeda. Naming our assets, ladies and gentlemen, how can you have a building for 90 years? Its name is called Main Building. Main Building. When there are people that are there and can give us more than 100 million or 50 million and we put their name in small letters. <laughs> So we need a voice around that. Programs, we need to review the programs with the intention to, to, to develop our research rate and graduate intention. And then we need to, I talked about the, the colleges, and then we need to do the centers of research and make them bring in resources. We need to engage development partners and do online courses and use our space. Here, I'm not talking about the, 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 the map holdings. I'm not going to talk about what is going to happen because we are in the bid. The first bids have come. We are opening them and evaluating them. Talking about them, I think, is not rough. Talk about what people are building for Kororo, for other places. Research grants, uh, these are my achievements, and some of them were made, mentioned by the, by the but look, when I came into the school, we had 40 projects. I left when we had 114 projects. See the graph? That's. When I came into the school, our turnover per year was 8.9. I left when our turnover was at 8.5 million dollars per year. I was able to secure a monitoring, a, a, an environmental monitoring instrument that is owned by him. Only in Uganda, the US has it in the embassy, but we got one through my project. We monitor the area of the whole of Kampala up to the airport. That's the radius. That's the only machine that is around in the whole of East Africa for an institution. And there it was. This is the infrastructure that I'm talking about. This is School of Public Health Infrastructure that I was able to create and I think we could, take, could do that. All those at the School of Public Health, some of you have never been there, you can go and see. Those are the, these are the innovations that we are able to support with my project that they talked about. And those are the people who work with you. We need to establish the University Science and Technology Park, STI. Science, Technology, Innovation Park. I will tell you that because of time, I have not got verifying it, but when you know what the park does. Now, see where the parks are. Uganda is nowhere. And we are competing with these countries. And the next one must be in the Macquarie University. Those are some of the things that we plan to put in the science park. Now, when I say plan, these drones have actually been brought to my office. I'm working with private partners so that an appropriate time, whether I am in this office or not, I will really remind you that we are able to actualize them. And that's what we think that we should be able to build. Now, as I come towards the end, as DVC, acting DVC, what have I achieved? I told you I negotiated up to yes. We negotiated with the Ministry of Education and Finance for Macquarie University Retirement and Benefit Scheme, which has always been a, a, a pin, a nail in our days. We got 20 billion, 10 billion last financial year. 10 million for the next financial year. And last week, only last week, we got an extra 5.1 billion. And I don't know whether the US wants to tell me that it's more that we need. If you do, we shall still negotiate it. <laughs> there was a shortfall that was going to happen, and some of you would have been worrying that you haven't got your pay. I negotiated for 4.5 billion because the shortfall that was coming. Well, now, 
on our salaries now and with our wages. I negotiated for money for the stadium. If some of you are there, I became the, is it the, the person who is the supervisor? I don't know. But I was there all the time. We got 5.7 billion and we put up the structure. Now, Nick has always been a problem with material university, fighting and not paying us. Now I negotiated with Nick and only a few days ago we finished the deal and we got a building on Kampara Road. Makere University will have a building on Kampara Road Road too. I'll show you the photo. I was also last week negotiated. You know students, they are very satisfied. I negotiated with, with the government and we got 1.5 billion. The US I told him start protrusion. I negotiated with people to advertise on campus 150 million per year for five years. We put lights and internet, internet that must be there for students. And then we also negotiated last week the in-house. In-house. For those who have already retired, we have now put 9.8 billion. This is money for me. As I tell you, MOOCs we have no more rambles now. Zero days to MOOCs, zero days to material. And I'm sure the chair of council will officially announce it when they meet. We have no more problems with MOOCs as far as money is concerned. They have paid what they owe us and we have zero. Clean negotiation in front of the minister. I have also negotiated, and this one I didn't want to tell you. But I saw the it. I will negotiate it. Money reinvest for Makere University for research. They have never given us money. Two good two days to explain, write the concept which they threw out, another one, we will find it, and the this is aware that we have been allocated in the next budget. 2019, 2020, 50 billion for the first time for research. as presidential initiative for research only. <laughs> That's our building on Kampara Road. It is occupied on the top floor by, by Brack and it is on Kampara Road and Roma Road. Now, in conclusion, this side you have seen and I want to teach it. I bring it to management prof as a professional manager, I come as a professional manager, Tested leadership skills. Ability to mobilize resources. To mobilize and negotiate until I get a yes. 17 years of university leadership and regional and international network leadership. Research grants, skills, capacity, capability for human resource development, and lastly, experience with member systems. A contribution to the university recovery. Thank you very much. As staff members, we've always been treated to information that uh, all that money, it's good you say you want to get more money, but we've been treated to information in the press that money is wasted and that's the whole reason we cannot be paid common good and as a result we are so disgruntled. So when you become BBC F and A, how will you ensure that all those monies you're bringing are protected from waste and staff get motivated? We need common. Thank you very much, Professor Rajin and Professor Sabit. You talked about a system to reward staff who excel. You realize, Mr. PC, there was a document, I was a chair of the Annual Committee of Senate. We developed the documents to reward all Magari staff now and in the past. Senate approved it. I was told it went to council. We have never got any feedback. There is a big document took us time to develop. So when you have an opportunity, please follow up that document. Thank you.
going to do to put a special boat to take care of it? Because this is the vessel of Makere. Not just it is called main building, it is still the vessel of Makere. And if you look up and outside, you see that it is in a sorry state. So what are you going to do so that it is renovated and kept, kept clean to show us uh, to the world? Because last week, we, uh, two weeks, we had a, a, a geopolitics conference that it is, in, as you can see, it is in a sorry state and what picture did they take. So we need to know what you're going to do to make sure that this place of Makere is kept up to standard so that when somebody comes here and says, yes, this is Makere, we want to hear you from that. Uh, Professor, one of the causes of strikes at Makere University is uh, actually to show peace. And in our neighboring country, Kenya, there is no student who drops out uh, of the university as a result of school fees because of uh, all students can access government loans, whether in private or public university. And as a good negotiator, what plans do you have to ensure that all students that qualify to join Makere can join on, say, a government person? I'm starting, Professor. And if the document is available, actually I need it today. <laughs> because when I'm in the office or not, I think this is something we must do. And I think there are people, people, there are people organizations that can support that project. And we reward our our people. Now let me start with the uh, Dr. Kabutiki, name bearing. This is our face, same And our face cannot be called name all the time. So, I talked about the naming policy. How can we make this a better place? We need to keep the architecture of this building. We need it to be safe. And some people have said this building, no building should be dwelling. I'm not sure that I'm in the same way, but we need to preserve it. Now, if we say we have a naming policy, and we say so and so, this building, we want to name it to a name. There are some people in this country who have money. Who would want their names to be there? Do you think they would want to accept with their name on such a building? Not work for it? We will first get money from them, how can you do it, before we put the name. But on the other hand, as a material you must manage it. As I talked about raising resources, we must keep our face clean. So, I didn't want to talk about the mouth holding. There's something they call signature bonus. When you give your land to somebody to develop it, Although you are going to share benefits, you receive at first before you start what we call the signature bonus. And we expect that Makere will get not less than $10 million from the signature bonus on Makere Coral Land. This is not far. Professor Nawangwe, this is close to your pockets. So you should plan that part of that signature bonus, because it is not refundable. We improve the infrastructure of this and was including the main Two, salary said the say money is wasted. Makere University is a public institution. It is audited every year by the Auditor General. If there was such a waste, you would see it, it would come out. But People who publish, of course, everybody is entitled to publish what he wants, but they publish the truth. And the money is there. You know, when you are dealing with a poor man, you don't really think that you have money even when you don't have it in the pocket. <laughs> Makere is a poor university, it does not have resources. So people look at Makere and say, they say it has money. So we need to get money and put money here. And I can assure you that. The systems in place will protect this money. And with the introduction of IFNIS, ladies and gentlemen, the university secretary is a county officer. His hands are 
right. He cannot pay any money and arrange it to go through that system. If the court is wrong, the money will not go. So there will be no waste. I can assure you. The system is in place. Lastly, the strike sanitation. In my presentation, I said, imagine Makeri with no scholarships. You know, you quoted Kenya. Kenya, the presidential director said, everybody will get a scholarship. The economy is stronger than ours. Uganda, we may not be able to reach there. But I will not promise you that we are going to negotiate with, you, with the government to get more funding or more scholarships. I propose that we raise resources and we create our own university loan scheme so that students who qualify are ours, we admit them, we give them loans. And because of the aim system, which is linked to the national ID, we are able to trap you. And for you to pay the money, we must create opportunities for you to be employed by bringing on board the private sector, the banks. So that you work with them, you do internship there, they employ you, we know where you work, you are able to pay. But our students now have been coming, they study, they go. We don't know where they are going to work. We must create opportunities for them. Thank you very much. I'm wondering about the 50 billion that you negotiated. Is it only for sciences or is it for all of us? <laughs> the science contribute to my career's road to recovery. My name is Christo Hechi and my question is in regard to the evening program. Recent research has established that the evening program, the administration of the evening program at this great institution is lacking. We admit these students and we seem to have lost the purpose for which the program was established. The students have more than standing two cash cows to bring in money for the institution when actually they don't receive back value for their money. So my question to you, Professor, is what do you intend to do ensure that the students on the evening program can benefit well in terms of the services they receive so that they can actually accomplish their learning objectives. Relates to the security of the university properties. And uh, uh, we understand I'm a journalist, so I've been following up some of these things, especially related to the issue of uh, university land. And uh, I think that is the pocket. Majority of the land currently has issues, and we have had several people settling on that land. And the university has struggled to even recover that land. What is your uh, mission uh, to make sure that the university retains back its land? And, uh, it does those fundamental projects like you are suggesting. And uh, relatedly, uh, the university... One question. One question. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I want to start with the language. And I want to enlighten people and enlighten the press since you are a journalist. You see, Many times we write to say, we write when he has said, but there are structures in Makay that could be approached when you get the actual details. In fact, if you got the actual facts, Makay will be shining on land. We visited the president in the restaurant, then by the chairman of council, when we received the visitation report, and he said, Makere University, you have a lot of land. And I know and I have heard some people have encroached on the land. My office will support you with the Ministry of Defense and Internal Affairs to make sure that you get your land. So when we came back, my office put up a task force, which includes our staff, staff from the Internal Security, Ministry of Defense and Lands. And I can tell you that, as I have said, that we have the biggest or the largest amount of land. Most of our land is not encumbered. Two, that that had some issues, the task force is working on them. And many of the people that we found on our land have actually accepted that we are on material land. Can we negotiate with you? 
And that's why when he comes in to negotiate and hear it, yes, for him must Evening programs. Now, when evening programs started, I think they started with the school of law. Some people have misunderstood them. Both the public, the students and others. Who are the people doing evening classes? I don't know whether all of us know. When, when I went through the, 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 the admissions, in the past, evening classes were supposed to cater for those who are able to come to school during the day and are working. But it turned out that evening classes admit those students who are unable to meet the hard of point for the day, for the morning. Therefore, we have many students admitted from A level evening, although they have no jobs. So the best thing they can do, they have nothing to do at home. They come and live around the campus. Now, I said something about student employment center. These are the people that we should actually employ to do work like registration and other things. And we shall be pay. Then they go to class in the day. But coming back to work for money, I talked about the morale and the motivation of the staff. If you are poor, paid, and you can't raise even food for your people, most likely you go to each other. You can raise some money for food. But if we are raising resources to motivate, incentivize, give the common good, people will be well paid. People will do research, let me tell you, if you are doing research, if you have money, you are well paid. You have time to teach. So they will get their money for money when you put things in the right system so that people are well paid, motivated, and then we shall also use them to do work and we give them money. Also, they need the money to, to, to do other things. Lastly, uh, I think that was evening class, then the security. Then they, somebody asked about research. Madam, research is research. When I go to negotiate, I don't go as a scientist, I go as Vazio, DEC, Finance and Administration. How is this money going to be used? Maybe just give you a push to start planning. We are not going to get the 50 billion and say, cover up 10. And choose faith. No. We have, because we have teams that have trained in writing what they call RFS, request for application. We identify a topic. For example, I want to ask you, does anybody know why Wanda Coffee sells eight, nine dollars a kilo and Uganda Coffee sells one to two dollars on the, on the market? So this is a study that you can do. You write an RFP, you apply, there will be a committee. They evade your application, they are located in the resources. So whether you are in arts or science, you will not need it. The other money in that research, we are looking at science. People have no money in their, in their, in their, in their, in their science labs. They are applying for money for the research and buy equipment for their research. Therefore, we shall have equipment for the labs and also do research that informs this mission. Thank you very much. David Bantidenga from the School of Law. Uh, you talked about uh, retirees and Makerere University Retirement Benefit Scheme, but there is a group uh, which you seem to have uh, left out, those people on contract whose graduates take ages to be paid. How are you going to handle this? Perhaps including paying interest on delayed uh, payments. Thank you very much. My name from the School of Liberal Performing Arts. I don't want to address specifically uh, the matter of uh, the Centre of Performing Arts, which uh, ideally would go with, uh, with the theatres that are quite important in the cultural life of a number of universities. Uh, currently, and since the university, uh, in Central American University, we have not had uh, that facility. How might you uh, approach that matter? Thank you, Professor Rio. My name is Ahmad Sijongo, University of Ah, You talked about mobilization of resources. And we also 
also talks about a poor man thinking that the other one has money all the time. Uh, I don't think we can develop all blessing or no pain all the time. Among others, we have to emancipate ourselves by doing something by ourselves. I'm requesting to hear from you what you intend to do about utilizing the potential that we have, mobilizing funds from, from us. The staff of university, administrative, academic, students, and the like. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll start with the, the Center for Performing Arts. A month ago, I represented Magere University at the inauguration of the president of Harvard. There were only two universities represented from Africa UCT and Magere University. The other man was a white, so I was a black. So there was only one black university represented. But what did I see? There was a function that was led by the performing art, their center. All they performed, that center was paid $1.8 million. How did I know? I went to see the head, when he talked and finished, I went to see him. Because they performed so much. Then I wanted to know where he got the people with poems and so on. And he said, this center makes more money than many centers here. Because we do work, we perform in all over this city and all over this country. In, in, in the US. Now, for you, we do not have those resources. We must give you the entire one. Because you have the people, you know, you have been waiting. You see people, they bring in this performing people, they pay 3 million. Makeri University, we are there in attendance. We have our people, we have our students that we can actually involve and use and make resources and look at that center. That's a center that needs to be developed, including another center that I didn't talk about. We don't have a museum here. People go to universities to want to look at a museum, and they pay. You have seen these buses going around with, the, with toys. When they come here, they just sit in the street and so on, and they go away. We have not started collecting resources for them. We will start, but we must have something for them to see. Begging, we cannot beg forever. I say we have the resources that we must exploit. Our land, our buildings, our students, our sales. I talked about government engagement. Every other day you see an advert that the government wants to do this study. They pay people who are trained in Makeri. If we had organized funds in Makeri, would they really be getting that money? Or if we negotiated with government and we signed the MOUs that Obama's uh, corrective health sciences, anything to do with health, they will be contacted. I, I must tell you, my, my dean is here. I negotiated with the Global Fund and the Ministry of Health. That any, anything they want to go to Global Fund, they first take the School of Public Health. If we are unable, they advertise it. If we are able, we do it. We don't do it. We signed an MOU and I was saying, that way did you say? You, you, you are going to cause us to be audited and what? Why? You should be audited. Because when you get resources, they are not for you. Last day, Professor Rajin, you know, when you are coming from nowhere, you can't ask for everything. The money I talked about for retirement benefits came. We didn't go there once. I went there, I gave them. I came back, I said this for was yours. He gave us another thing. And I told you last week, I went back and they presented the case that I got money for the toilet, the toilets, and the, 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 the remaining 5.1. And then I said, but how about in-house? He said, okay, we shall also be. So even the US, I think we have had the, the, the gratuity should be paid. Should actually be paid, including me, because my appointment, I think, has expired, has been on contract. I should also be paid. But on the interest bit, I think, as an entrepreneur, I 
and a lively environment learning person. If you are in an institution, you love it, it's sound, you sound it. If there is great money, and you know that they didn't have when they gave it, we will request you to accept it without interest. Because we cannot ask where we are getting that give us interest. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor. And uh, finally, uh, I'm going to ask a final question. Uh, Professor, the presentation has been lovely, but there are some buzzwords now around the university. Things like research aid, and then thinking about finance and our 35,000 uh, students. The university, instead of being a research aid university, it has ended up being a teaching aid university. So, because these are the major funders of this university. As a person who negotiates until uh, a yes is given, where do you see the position of Makerere University? Given what you have talked about, Jambogo, uh, Sitema, you know they are also teaching now, they are teaching Bikom, they are teaching BBA, and you are competing for the same students. Makerere University, more than 95 years since its uh, establishment. What should it should be its position as a research led university in this country. Thank you very much, Margarita. You know, you said we are competing with the same universities. I think Margarita should not compete with the students. If we are competing, then we are doing the wrong thing. Students should know the only place they want to go is. So, Makiri University, we must strategize ourselves, and I talked about this. None of these universities, when you hear of their idea that they give laptops and so on, but they, do they give that knowledge? I was on the Council for Victoria, and I left, and I said, this is not where I belong. <laughs> I went there and hoping that I would help them come near and get it. I saw they were going away, so I left. <laughs> but when we say science or research rate, in many universities, ladies and gentlemen, researchers have students on their projects. Makere University, we do not have our students on our projects. There must be a change of mindset. How do we consider our students? These are the work and the, the work we do and the research we do. So we must integrate them. But why are we not integrating them? Because we have not had the negotiation power to say, you are funding me, but I have students who will do research. So we have been dancing around the donor say I am finding only this, this, this. So we must change and we cannot change when we have our own money. Come the 50 billion, we will have our students to research with us. And our students and prospective students will know where to apply. Lastly, if we create student scholarships by the university, we are not taking every body that applies here. We are taking the best. And the best students will come here. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in appreciating uh, Professor William Basilio. Thank you.